Lurus. And mm -hmm. the the you know, it's funny because the creature density at first blush doesn't look very high, but then you've got Kai's Ghost form, you've got Claim to Fame, you've got Lurus, which actually kind of makes those eight creatures do a lot more work and feel a lot more present than they would yeah. otherwise. Exactly. They keep coming back for more. And, uh, you know, and I guess Paulo's hands keep coming back for more, too. A mulligan to five already. Yeah, you just, just couldn't find keep, SRAM. Yeah, you can't keep hands without, uh, without a creature here. And this yeah. is why we see Paulo mulligan down to five. There is the SRAM, the Thought Season, and Agadim's Awakening is what's being picked up. Good to see the, the dead weight in the Myers Grass. Pretty easy to mulligan those away, as the Bant Midrange deck doesn't really play good targets for them. Yep, 100%. And just a great hand from Andre Strasky. Baffling in into Narset is kind of what you're looking for. But now Paulo has a plan. It's play SRAM and pray that we can get some auras before Narset comes down and not really care about that static ability because you mm. can just attack it away. Ooh, well, Ooh, this isn't too bad, policy. actually. Here yeah. we go. We're going to see Duress instead probably next turn. And now PP will be hoping for another aura, as you say, Sentinel's Eyes, maybe, and all that glitters, anything really that's going to help the, uh, the SRAM start drawing cards. But... The fact that either that Wrath or that Narset can hit the bin. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Drawing yeah. three discard spells against this uh, against this hand is actually just so, so good here. Really is good. You get Narset, you get Wrath of God, and now it's up to see. Andre keeps saying falsely, I think, that he just keeps getting lucky and keeps getting lucky. He is an amazing player and he downplays himself quite a lot. But now it's time to test. Can he get lucky on this? Can he get now? lucky? Yeah, because <laughs> right now this Hydroid Crisis is sort of comically bad sitting in his hand you know maybe you play it as a 2-2 so you can draw one card with it or something but that's yeah. really not where you want to be pv oh, no matter what mind. he's got something coming next turn oh a baffling end okay much better what was i saying about this him not being lucky can, can we scratch that from the tape because that was yeah, a pretty lucky draw it looks like it looks like we've now got incontrovertible evidence of the fact <laughs> yeah. that andres trasky does every now and again just pull a bit of spicy pepperoni <laughs> off the top of his library here's Luris now being put in hand to slower sort of finish here for PV as Andre Strasky. A little bit of breathing room for him now. He can choose to play the Crisis for two, cycle through it, or he can scry, put Kahira in hand. Looks like that's what he's going to do. And here's the just really frustrating thing from Paulo is if you put that Thought Seize in the opposite order of Kaya's Ghost form, then that SRAM comes back and we just mm. start drawing cards. Like the, the game looks really different if uh, we do that. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So no oh, Kai's Ghost no. Lurus here, but a, oh, a baffling end, and this is going to make PV wish he'd played that Kai's Ghost form here. Yep. I mean, look, after a mulligan to five, it's always going to be tough to recover in a position like this, but he certainly made a good go of it, did PV. Uh, finds a SRAM. Okay, was, well. Yeah, this is great. This was the reason to not um, play Kai's Ghost form on Lurus, because even if Lurus comes back, it's not bringing back anything, so it's not that big of a deal. I guess it can uh, bring back Kai's Ghost form after that, but you're not drawing a card, right? The way Paula wins this is by chaining together these enchantments and just getting this SRAM way out of reach of even a 4-4 Hydroid Crisis or something along those lines. So so putting the, the, the Ghost form on the Lurus would have sort of been like treading water, you're saying? It wouldn't have actually advanced his game plan meaningfully enough to do it? Exactly, because let's say... Uh, Andre just leaves that Luris and doesn't really touch it for a while. Then let's say Paulo top deck SRAM and stuff. Now you just play a 2-2 and you don't have any cards to draw because you wasted your Kai's Ghost form on it. So um, a little interesting there. PP is going to exchange the Kai's Ghost form for that Kahira. And now this is looking a little bit better. This Hydroid Crisis was looking Oof. pretty bad. But once you get to Oof. six lands, casting it for X equals four is really good. And while wow, those are two great hits there, Nissa and Commit. And I'm going to go so far as to say that this game is probably going to go the way of Andre Strasky. It will take an incredible series of draws here for Paolo to win this one. Yeah, once again, I just want to apologize for Paolo for picking him to win twice in a row. So far, it's just been the 100% death nail, whoever I pick, yep. uh, to win one of these things. But... Strasky all the way down by the look of things here. He's got Nissa. He's got Commit to get rid of whatever uh, PV comes up with. This Hydroid Crisis is going to put a very respectable clock on, not to mention the fact that Nissa can also start getting in there for three here. Mm -hmm. This is two-turn clock already. Not quite enough mana uh, for Commit to be held up this uh, this turn. You just always kind of think, oh, they've always got Breeding Pool, right? But no, no, not this but time. But we, we do have a forest, so Commit is Oh, there's is a online. forest, excuse yep. me, so it is mm -hmm. fine. Yep, yep, Commit is actually fine here with the untap. Sorry. Oh, no good. No problem. I know you're a little frazzled from our halftime show where Monty was just so mean to you it's for so no nasty reason. nasty to me, man. And you know what, Corey? I really just don't like people who pick on other people. 
I know, like, man. Just it's like bullies. You like cyber wrong. bullies. You're a good especially, guy. Like, especially people who pick on their colleagues. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'd never say anything rude to you. Like, no. ever. Even no, though, like, you're a bit of a guy. twerp, you know, you're always bloody <laughs> saying right, goofy it. stuff, always being a bit of a deal. I'd never say that to you. That's the thing, right? We see PV here. He's yeah, going to pack it up. That's hypothetical. Hypothetically, that's the thing. I keep that to myself. I don't say, oh, Corey, you know, he's a bit of a bloody goose, isn't he? I wouldn't say that to you. That's the difference, yes. you know. Just, I only say that behind your back. And money didn't even have the good sense to do that. Anyway, PV goes down in game number one. An unfortunate set of circumstances here for the Brazilian superstar, a mulligan. Uh, a series of bad draws, and Andre able to weather that early storm. A bunch of uh, discard spells really did rip his hand apart. But at the end of the day, his, uh, the top of his deck, as you'd expect, treated him a little bit better. And yeah. he was able to find the tools that he needed. And, you know, I mean, Andre's just been playing amazing magic. You have to be d having a great combination of playing great magic and getting lucky at times if you're going to be 9-0 against pod A of the MPL. These are literally the greatest magic players of all time. And, and being able to pick up nine wins against those players, it's a combination of luck and skill for sure. Absolutely. Let's move on now to game number two. I'll let you know the sideboarding details here for both of these players. Andre has brought in three copies of Mystic Subduel, the mystery card. No one quite understands how it works. And has taken out two copies of Yashan, Implacable Earth, of course, not so great in this matchup, and a Shark Typhoon. On the other hand, Paolo has brought in, unsurprisingly, more Duresses. Two of them, two Fragmentize and two Sorcerer Spyglass, named those Planeswalkers. And taken out, claim to fame, dead weight, Heliod's punishment, and Maya's grasp. Unsurprising, Corey, the CPV cut down on the creature interaction here. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, Riley, I cannot wait to butcher some more interactions with Mystic Subduel. That's what I came here to do today, and and we're gonna do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh real. <laughs> There's <laughs> one thing we understand as a team, and that's layering when it comes to Mystic Subduel. That's that's one thing we've been studying all night. So I was talking to a man of mine about this, who's a judge, and he was saying that it's all about, like, timestamps and stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, magic's hard enough as it is, Corey. Yeah. You know, there are numbers that go, I mean, very high. It's like numbers are one, two, three. I, I, I lose track. And then yeah. on top of that, we've got to worry, like, we've got to, you know, keep track of when, what came in when, and who said what at which point. I mean, jeez, I'm just... It's Truly, not. Corey, it is a game for those of, of exceptional cranial capacity, and I don't know if I'm amongst them, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, we're definitely uh, not at the level of these Paulo and Andre Strasky fellows. They've uh, been making it look easy, even though these uh, cards are, are are quite difficult. Mystic Subduel oh, yeah. being a very interesting one. So Core Spirit Dancer now can fling that up into the sky with an angelic gift, or instead play a SRAM uh, and hope to draw a bit of a few extra cards <laughs> off of it. And that's what's going to happen here. Is it round time? Terrible against a Wrath of God off the top here. Can Andre oh. find it? Huh. No, it's just a commit. All right. <laughs> If, if this was Wrath right there from Andre, we just give him the Worlds trophy at this point. You know, like, it, it's done. Not only it's did you make up. it to Worlds, you just win. Everybody just else plays for a second. Save everyone a bunch of time and just not even run the tournament. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. But it says commit to memory. One mana short of the Nissa here. And also, if he wants to play Nissa next turn, he may have to put that Zagoth Triumph onto mm -hmm. the battlefield. So... Could play Growth Spiral, could uh, play Kahir or put Kahir in his hand at least. A few interesting options here for the young yeah. Czech player. Yeah, I think I like the commit. I mean, just, I, I think you got to commit somewhat early here um, before we just start going off. Yeah, I like this. Draw step, commit. So now that it is two cards down, otherwise drawing two cards here is just going to get absolute, or three cards with Angelic Gift is mm -hmm. just going to get insane. And this is already quite strong. So, yes, a little a momentary setback here for PV, who picks mm -hmm. up the Core Spirit Dancer thanks to the Angelic Wings plus SRAM, in for two, and will probably see a shock and have the 0-2 redeployed. So this is Andre Strasky just trying to put, you know, a stick in the spokes, just trying to take the pressure down a little bit. Mystics of Duel off the top isn't a bad one. Can't play Nissa this turn, but Growth yep. Spiral instead here. Trying to find track. a baffling end or something to deal with one of these. But this will at least stop the draw a card ability, I'm hoping. <laughs> I mean, who knows, From this right? Core spirit who knows? Ooh, that was a nice draw. That Mystic Subdual nice now. So Core Spirit Answer, just a minus two, two with yes. no abilities. Uh, whereas SRAM is going to become a three, three flying first strike creature here. Yep. And Core Spirit Dancer is the principal beater of this deck. SRAM does tend, send a, tend to play second fiddle, so it's not surprising to see Mystic Subdual put on the Core Spirit Dancer instead, as it does uh, remove its, uh, you know, the the uh, opportunity for it to become just truly monstrous. 
Yep. There is Sorcerer Spyglass naming Nissa who shakes the world. So that Andre Andre's copy of Nissa isn't going to do a whole lot. However, it's very important to note here that the passive ability remains. Sorcerer Spyglass doesn't blank that. So we can still play a massive Hydroid Crisis next turn. Yeah, we have nine mana right now. That Crisis off the top, I think, was just perfect. Maybe Narset would have been a better draw just because you can go Narset into memory and draw mm -hmm. about the same amount of cards. But you even see Paulo putting an equity on getting this Nissa dead in two turns. He's going to have a rude awakening of what's going to be coming into play um, this next turn with that Hydroid Crisis and just refueling the oh, hand oh, already. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think rude awakening was, was legal in, in, in historic <laughs> matter. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> knee slapper there, bud. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I try my very hardest here as Luris now bought and paid for and then put into play. And there's but now with 10 mana... Oh my. Okay, so what have we got? A crisis for eight here? Crisis for ten even with untapping a... No, no, of course. The there's crisis the, uh, for eight, you can't untap. Yeah, can't untap with the Sorcerer Spyglass. Yep, so Paolo it's just a crisis just like, for are eight. Are you kidding me at this point? Oh my like... goodness, look at that. The exhalation, he can't believe yeah. it. Very, very tough bounce for him here. And <laughs> this game going further and further in the way of Andre Strasky. Yeah, Rude Awakening might not be in the format, but it seems like Demonic Tutor is in the format for Andre because he's just casting that every single turn at his upkeep. Yeah, he seems <laughs> to be doing very, very well indeed. Unreal here. So yeah, this just... attack is going to take Nissa out, and I don't mean to dinner, even though it will cost Paolo the Scramble. That's not a huge cost to pay. Mm -hmm. No, look at this. This is a next level block here for Andre, who realizes that you know, killing the SRAM doesn't really do anything as um, Lurus can just bring it back. There's a second SRAM anyway. And not even that, you get the auras back. That's the yeah. biggest thing. Now Lurus can can go with some auras. Paulo was already going to do that. So it almost didn't matter, except he didn't have to waste two mana if uh, Andre Straske made made the incorrect block of killing the SRAM. So Angelic have put on the core spirit dancer here hmm. and draws, two, draws a card. Excuse this me. is nice. This is nice. This is so that core spirit uh, dancer can just block Hydroid mm -hmm. Crisis mm -hmm. and then be played from the graveyard. A really heads up play from Paulo. God, these two are good at magic. They're really good. Taking They're some pretty really unorthodox good. lines on the front of the, you know, on the face of things. But once you have a think about it, it's like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We're going to see yep. another angelic gift here. So Paulo kind of storming off a little bit. Yeah, and here we go. Yeah, that, that core spirit dancer blocking the Hydroid Crisis means that it not only it can be played, it also gets rid of that Mystic Subdual. And so its mm -hmm. ability will uh, will start to uh, to really turn this game on its head although yeah. andres has found another hydro crisis here so yep a crisis pretty good here but i think we're even going to see a little bit more equity on trying to baffling end maybe mm -hmm. lures or baffling end sram um we'll, we'll see what he does there's a lot of options available to andre but another crisis is is for sure defensible as well the crisis would only be for the only fan favorites. But wow, hard cast shark typhoon. You love to see it. Not something you see the pros do too often, but here it is. Makes it 2 2, gets rid of the Lurus, and that kind of uh, solves two problems at one stroke here. That core spirit dancer can't come back. PV had kind of set up for the galaxy brain block here to bring it back with the, uh, the Lurus next turn, but Andre denies that availability, that op opportunity here for PV, and instead it's just going to soak up kind of uselessly. Uh, two damage as the crisis tramples over. Oh, double all that glitters though. Yeah, but now we have this this shark as a blocker here. That's why this shark typhoon was so good. Mm. If we, I don't even know how we really get past the shark typhoon, but I mean, otherwise this would be a, a great draw. So all the glitters draws a card. Mm -hmm. If we still had dead seven, weights in, seven. we have Heliod's punishment. I think those were still left in. Uh, one was taken out, so I think there's still, uh, there's yeah, still, it's still in the deck here. That's what Kai's we need. Form is going to make it a 15-15 here. My goodness me, this is a big, beefy boy. Yep. And, uh, and it does right have away. Vigilance, so you can block the Krasis. Now yep. all Andre needs is a Baffling End. So we really might see memory here just to get that many looks at a Baffling End for the win. Plus it, it creates a 6-6 six, six Shark here. Could just see a crisis to get some value too, and just maybe go for a four-four crisis. That's a little more conservative, I think. Mm -hmm. But memory is a, a possible line here. Memory, the problem there would is, is that it also <laughs> gives PV a fresh hand. So, so hybrid crisis here now for six. There's the baffling end. Yeah, but giving Paulo a, a, a full hand here doesn't really matter if you hit baffling end, and he would have hit it. 
So I, I'm starting to think, unless I'm missing something, that just would have been game. PV with an Agadeem's Awakening now. This can bring back, I think, just a core spirit dancer. Yep. Or a. Uh, it's the only yep. card really that's going to make any sense. The SRAM could be brought back, wouldn't do much. So, core spirit dancer, Sentinel's Eyes. And we have to find something here to get through because that baffling end is there. And it, it will be. Oh, Thoughtseize, that is perfect. We wow. needed that to take baffling end here. Wow. Thoughtseize off the top here is going to mean that. Andre, once again, on the ropes. We've had this game go back and forward. It's been, there's been ups wow. and downs like a yo-yo here. Been all over the shop. Stram's going to get in, of course. We'll see a chump block probably with the 6-6 six, six, now that there isn't that double block available. And I want to say that was either the second or the third baffling end. So we might be running out of cards here mm -hmm. that we can actually get. And that's two commit memories. So there's either two or three... Or there's either one or two baffling ends left in the deck to clear out the SRAM. Otherwise, we just have to go with the plan of like Wrath of God. And that doesn't really get um, Andre anywhere, you know, because you you lose that aggression. You, mm. you, you lose that very convenient 8-8 eight, eight when your opponent's at 8. So fragmentize now. Can't get rid of the Shark Typhoon, but can get rid of the baffling end. Yep. Make a nice 3-3 three, three dino. I think at this point, yeah, Strasky is kind of on... On Wrath or Vast, I mean, another baffling end, I guess, would do it. He can cast Commit to Memory and Wrath of God, so he does have that available True. to him next turn. But I think next turn, yeah, we have to see Commit to Memory, right? He, he needs to dig deep, but it's just... The problem is he just gives PV so many cards. Yep. I, I think we're getting to that position where Paulo is actually pulling so far ahead here. Oh, look at this. Once again, just a next level play, a play that we didn't even consider, and Paulo's like, oh, of course this is better. You draw two cards. Right, he plays the sent <laughs> he, he destroys his own Sentinel's eyes. Oh, I mean, no. bloody bugger getting a a, a, a a three three dinosaur. He says, "I want two cards." He he yeah. flashes back the Sentinel's eye. Wow, this is just he, he, they're on another level. He has Sentinel's eyes in the back of his head. This man. Oh, very good, Corey. <laughs> thank very you, thank good. You. I'll mate. be here for a couple more rounds, everyone. <laughs> oh wow, just <laughs> premium stuff from Corey Baumeister there. Yes. We'll take a nice C minus joke there at no, this. That's, mate, that's usually listen, what I that go was, for. That that's my that's shelf. my peak. That was exceptional <laughs> gear from you there, mate. Well done indeed. Well, so Andre nice here, thinking about thinking about what he wants to do. And uh let's see the direction he, he heads in here. Is he gonna go for the memories? Is he gonna go for hydroid crisis? He I think Andre is think recognizing how far behind he's actually falling, and it's time yeah. to give yourself seven chances to find that baffling end. Is it there? Oh, then you get to show. Oh, he can't, he can't cast the wrath. He can't cast wrath of God because he doesn't have double white. Oh no! Wait a minute. Does Mystic Subduel shut down flying? I mean, is this is this another thing we have to come down to here? I think it comes down to timestamps, doesn't it? So uh, maybe because I think he did draw it. I think that's the far left card. Yeah, Mystic Subduel is the card on the left there. Yeah. I think and it comes down to timestamps. I mean, it can remove it removes abilities that are already there, but it can gain new abilities. That's my understanding. I could be wrong, but if that's, wow, that's the case, so it's over. So an explore. <laughs> and now it if Mr. must Subdual, not be otherwise Strosky would have jammed this already. Does it just does it keep flying that, that was given to it from the uh from the aura there? Yeah, same with Kai's ghost form as in when uh it, it maintains that ability because of the enchantment, uh gift is must be the same. I'm being told that no Mystic Subdual does remove flying. Really? That I mean that's coming straight from a judge. Okay. Coming Let's... straight from a judge. So... Okay, well, I'll trust a judge on this. This would definitely be a spot where I'm playing in a tournament. I would be like, Judge, how does my cards yeah. work? This is coming from Judge John Nowert. So if he's wrong, everyone, you know where to you know who to hit up on Twitter about it. Okay. Okay, the the the, the Mystic Subdual is put on the core spirit dancer here. Uh -huh. And a fragmentize can remove the Mystic Subdual. Start getting those card draws going. But it seems, I mean, if we're right about that Mystic Subduel, Andre could have uh, shot the SRAM out of the sky. Maybe that's not how it works, however. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it would make sense to me that that's not how it works. But wow, I mean, what a confusing who knows? <laughs> layer. I was actually joking when I said this would give us more opportunities to butcher Mystic Subduel lines. But here yeah. we are, actually. Here we are, it. just doing it again. It's a story. Yeah. It's a tale as old as time. We're a good duo, man. We're a good duo. Yeah. That's it. No, apparently that is how it would work. That is wow. how it would work. A Mystic Subdual would have removed flying. You could then give it flying again by putting another angelic gift on it, but it would remove the instance of flying that it already had. 
And uh, yeah, so Andre missing that one, unfortunately, wow. is another copy of Angelic Gift. So we are on the mono chump blocks from here on out for the foreseeable. Both of these creatures, flying and vigilance, lucky there's this shark army to try to keep them at bay. That is just crazy to me. Maybe Andre is like straight BMing Paulo, where he's just like, you know what? I want to try to win this game multiple times to, before I get into worlds here. Uh, <laughs> probably not the case, but wow, just unreal if that if that really was the case. Another fragmentize. Where's it going? There's so many copies <laughs> for uh, so many different things to choose from here. I didn't realize fragmentize was brought in to destroy your own enchantments. Yeah, I mean, hey, I guess it does are. make sense. You just get more activations. But destroying Mystic Subduel and destroying Baffling End is kind of a, a, a little extra prize. So, Mystic, uh, sorry, Sentinel's Eyes here. Draw a Follow couple with cards. just one million cards. And he's shaking his head. Must be looking for something specific yeah, here. Yeah, it looks like it. Otherwise, you know, why would you spin your wheels like this? Anyway, in they come. This is a huge attack, an attack for 37. But there is the uh, the chump block available with those sharks. Sajiri Step, probably the card Paula was looking for. The card that would just win the game on the spot. That, that right. makes sense yep. to me, looking at uh, his deck yep. list. Give it protection from blue and just get straight in there, yeah. Yeah, but still looking really good for Paulo here. Um, oh, and a duress as well to get rid of this Wrath of God in hand. Yeah, and the Wrath isn't even that big of a deal because with, with Shark Typhoon, it's kind of a Nambo where you you get the 4-4 and then Wrath takes it away. So mm -hmm. not, not exactly the best sorcery or instant to play into this and also i'm assuming paulo has some kaya's ghost forms on those creatures yeah it's so lost within uh that stack that it's a little tough to tell but no i, th I think there are i think you can just see that there are a couple of black cards attached attached yeah. to both of those creatures in any case it doesn't matter we're going to see thought sees clear out the rest of the hand here probably going to get rid of yeah there, there goes the, okay. uh, the missa as well wait a minute i mean i think we're in the territory again of baffling end or mystic subduel if it does indeed work the way that we think where it stops flying where these flyers can just get through so if i was andre i would just be casting that crisis for x amount leave two mana open mm -hmm. uh, whatever i can leave two mana open and then just try to find it hopefully close out this game so cycling the scattered groves to begin with there's commit that's it Okay, commit to memory here. Can remove one of these flying blockers, and now... That's game. Is that enough? That's yeah. enough now because of the 6-6 six, six and the 8-8. Eight, eight. So Andre Strasky is finding the, the card that he needed to get himself into Worlds. Congratulations <laughs> to Andre Strasky. What a win for him, cycling into a last-minute removal spell in order to keep himself alive and, and do one better. Vanquish his foe, Paolo Vito Dama de Rosa. We will be seeing Andre Strasky at Worlds. Wow, congratulations to Andre. Just a phenomenal performance here. 10 and 0 to lock up Worlds. Just incredible. So really, congratulations to you. Untouchable today and hopefully for his sake, untouchable when it comes to the World Championship number 27 because he will be there in pride of place. Congratulations, mate. And now... The attention turns to the people remaining in his pod, the people who are going to be able to sew up those uh, those positions in the following weeks. But a, a, a week filled with high drama here. And once again, congratulations to Andre Strasky. A very well-earned performance. Uh, sorry, very well-earned result after an, a, an astonishing performance. Incredible. He's done really well, Corey. Incredible. I mean, honestly, that was just masterclass play. Even if he had the win with the Mystic Subduel, he's just like, you know what? I want to I wanna win a couple of turns later. This is later. too complicated. You know what? Yeah. I don't want to get layers and time stamps involved. I just want to use a removal spell. It's going to get it out of there. I don't want people bloody fiddly fighting around with this or that or the other thing. I'm just going to use commit to memory and get it out of here. That's it. Exactly. Smart man. Smart man. So congrats. So we've got our backup match coming your way, my friends. Let's have a look at who we will be getting across in uh, our follow-up match here. Andre, oh, sorry, Andrea Mangucci playing Reed Duke, abs in mid-range against Sultai Ultimatum. These two players are going to go at, at it after a quick break. So stick around, everyone. We'll be back with more coverage of the League Weekend after this.
Welcome back to coverage of the League Weekend Run and I joined by Corey Baumeister. Time to head down to the feature match area for our next matchup here. Andrea Mengucci playing off against Reed Duke, two famed and well beloved members of the Magic Pro League and teammates on Channel Fireball, Team uh, Channel Fireball. And Andrea, oh, look at that. Wow. Blow me down with a feather playing Yorion <laughs> Sky Nomad. Can you believe it? I can believe it because me and Andrea Mangucci share the love for the Sky Noodle. So, God, I appreciate that he's submitted Yorion for every single tournament, I think, in the in 2021 in, two, in the year two, 2020 and 2021. I think it's just been all Yorian. Yes, indeed. He's playing Gabzan Midrange. This is a deck that uh, Gabriel on a seat brought to the uh, Coldheim, uh, sorry, the uh, Coldheim Championships yep. just a brief number of weeks ago. And this list is just all removal all the way down. If you're, if you're hoping to keep a creature alive against uh, Abzan Midrange, you got another thing coming, my friend. He's up against Reed Duke, who is playing uh, kind of a, the new hotness, really, in mm. historic Sultai Ultimatum. This is a deck that's kind of been ported over from standard, at least conceptually, and it's playing Emergent Ultimatum and a finishing package that is a little, uh, well, it's it's quite a, uh, quite a big brain finish to a game. You get Scholar of the Lost Trove, Omniscience, and Final Parting. Between those three cards... If they don't give you Omniscience, you use a Scholar and the Final Parting to cast another Immersion Ultimatum. If they don't give you the Final Parting, you've got a Scholar of the Lost Trove and an Omniscience. And if they don't give you the, the, the Scholar of the Lost Trove, you've got an Omniscience and a Tutor, which you can go and get anything and cast it immediately for free. So very much between a rock and a hard place and an yeah. e even harder place, I suppose, here. Uh, as these two players go at it. But we haven't seen, the disappointing thing about this deck is we don't actually often see the Emergent Ultimatum resolve too much, right? Because either yeah. they die before they get to cast it or they put it on the stack and the opponent concedes. Yeah, it's pretty rude of all these Sultai Ultimatum opponents that just keep scooping and, and not letting us see this cool combo. You know, I'm sure all of them have been seeing this combo enough practicing against this deck that they mm. know what's going to happen. But I just want to see it. It's too It's too sweet. Let's get underway here. It's our backup match, of course, here. These two players getting ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Reed's happy with his uh, seven. Mangucci considering what he... I think this is fine, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely fine. But here's the thing about this matchup. The Abzan deck and the Solte Ultimatum decks both are really play preying on these Jun Sacrifice and Jun Food decks. And they, you know, that's what they wanted to play against. But the problem is the Abzan deck is really preying on these decks. And what I mean by that is like, it doesn't have great matchups outside of John Food, but it just really wants to play against John round after round after round. Sultai can kind of hold its own against other decks. And in fact, this matchup between Sultai and Abzan is quite good for the Sultai side, but Andrea Mangucci played this Sultai deck yesterday and was talking about how thankful he was to beat Gabriel Nassif with this deck, just recognizing what a bad matchup it is. So we'll see uh, if he can repeat that performance. Here's Narset now. Reed going to activate the Pater of Veils. Finds a couple of different ramp spells. Ramp spells, Corey, absolutely critical for this Soul Tile mm -hmm. Tomatum deck. Really, the dream start for this deck is turn to either explore or grow spiral, turn three, cultivate into who knows what else. And... Mm -hmm. uh, look, I haven't crunched the numbers. I'm not a mathematologist at the end of the day, but like this can cast an immersion ultimatum on like turn five, I believe. Yeah, I I think I think it is possible on turn four with enough Wolf Willow Havens. Um, because you can cast it on turn four in standard, and all you have is Wolf Willow Havens and cultivates. It involves uh, right. like Haven on two, turn An three Haven land, into yeah. cultivate, yeah. you know, and then turn four ultimatum. But you you said it perfectly here, Riley. That's the big difference between these decks. Ramp. One of them is ramping. The other one is trying to kill a creature at every step. And when one player is not casting creatures, yeah. <laughs> then you're doing nothing on your turn. And when one player is not drawing any lands, that's also pretty bad news bears. Yeah, it's a tough matchup for Mangucci, especially when he's not drawing lands. Look at that. That's really rough. You know, he finds a... Uh, he's just going to discard a useless baffling end, but the fact that he can't develop his mana here. And now, look, this is an emergent ultimatum, and Mangucci's just dead. Like, hey, just there, come there's, on. There's, there's nothing you can do. It. You know, we're, we're going to see... We're going to see the combo here, but... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He's already side We got close. That's the closest we've gotten, <laughs> he's right? He's already please? side -boarding. <laughs> <laughs> I love that in the middle, while while Reed was going and picking through those cards up in the top sliver of the screen there, we normally see Mangucci's hand. He's already sideboarding. That's the equivalent, right? You know when we used to play in paper in the old in the olden days, right? In the, in the before times, 
Mm. Your opponent is like going through the process of like, you know, sacrificing their kitchen things or whatever. And you're already in your, you've already opened your deck box, already pulled your side. Be like, yeah, yeah, whenever you want to finish, mate, that's fine. We're going to game two. Or my favorite thing, just like I'll I'll tap out an aggressive deck, and I'm like, "Do you have it?" And they just show it to me. I'm like, "Yep, we don't even have to yep. go to your turn." Shortcuts in Paper Magic. Don't <laughs> worry about it. When it comes to that, wow. So we move on now to the sideboard. You can see the uh, the changes that were made here, and unsurprisingly, uh, Andrea has attempted to bring in cards that are going to be a little more. Uh, I have a little more oomph to them, you know, the Scarab God, we've got Shark Typhoon, Narset as well. Interesting to see Languish come in, but uh, that's a nod probably to Shifting Ceratops, which you can see Reed Duke has brought two copies of in. And also Necromantia. Spicy. Yeah, we uh, we got those flipped upside down, so Andre is bringing in the Necromantia, and that is definitely a nod to just hitting Emergent Ultimatum. If you hit Emergent Ultimatum, the deck doesn't function as highly you can still win games we I, I believe it was me and you commentating when we saw that ridiculous golos match with reed yesterday and you can see how you can win outside of those ultimatums with that kind of nonsense but the much easier game plan is just do what reed just did that last game here we go with game number two reed picking up game number one very very convincingly here and uh, it looks like we're ready to go with the. It looks like there's a slight um, discrepancy between the timing of the two recordings. Do apologize for that. But in any case, ready to go. And this looks like a great hand here for Reed. Yeah, one, once again, like, I mean, it looks like a fine hand for Andrea. You got some good cards, shifting Ceratops, scary, but we just see Explore and Cultivate, and you know Reed isn't going to stumble. And you look at Mangucci's hand. There's a pretty high chance he stumbles, right? He's, he has 1,000 Yorians right now and doesn't have land for it to even cast shifting Ceratops. So Andrea Mangucci getting lucky in quotations here is just drawing a fourth land and casting a 5-4. Reed has already got this all mapped out that he is going to be casting Cultivate into big spells for the rest of the game. And the other part of this deck that we haven't touched upon uh, so far while we've been talking about it today, Corey, is the fact that it pl also plays Golos, right? You play Golos, yeah. Tyler's Pilgrim, you go and get the World Tree, which is a way to fix all of your mana so you can activate the Golos uh, five-color ability. And from that point, you just start spinning the wheel, baby, and off the top, you're eventually going to hit an ultimatum. And then when you do, it's all, it's all great from there. And even if you don't hit yep. the ultimatum, you hit an ultimatum target, man. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this deck has the the big advantage from the standard version, as much as it pains me to say, there's no Yorian. So that deck constraint of not having to have 20 other cards that aren't Cultivate and Emergent Ultimatums really increases the amount that you're just going to draw it when you need it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's Cultivate now. Reed Duke using the digital equivalent of basic land station basics here. Yeah, Disappointing to see it. What's your really basic of choice me, to be on? Honest, yeah. What's wow, wow, Corey, wow. <laughs> what's your basic of choice on Arena, Corey? So I would totally um, use the unhinged ones, but I missed uh -huh. that event where you can get those unglued, unhinged oh, lands. Nice. So I just use those. Um, uh, God, I don't know exactly what set they're from, but they're the full art, the recent ones, I believe, from Keldheim. Um, just oh, where battle, the mana symbol from... sits right in the middle. It's, it's full art. Oh, it's just Theros. beautiful. Theros. Yeah. Theros, Theros. Yeah. yeah, the Theros ones, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the sort of starry sky ones with the sort of nebulae cloud sort of stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. But I have giant posters in my house of the unglued lands in two different sizes. So I have 10 basic lands hung up wow. in my house. I'm a nerd. What Very a happy. nerd. Yeah. What mm -hmm. a nerd. Speaking of Thank nerds, you. Andrea Mangucci using a Knight of Autumn to blow up Reed Duke's Golas here. Yeah, impressive. But Reed's not going to be too worried about that because he's got a hand that is all business. Elder Gargaroth can come down here. And honestly, this game is basically all but over. Not even because of this play. Like, this play is pretty sweet. Double Gargaroth, not bad. But next turn, Scarab God, four mana, bring back Golos. Good game. You know, yeah. It, yep. it, this is it already. And this just shows how bad of a matchup this is. Andrea is just not doing the same things. They're both going to be killing creature decks, you know, with very high efficiency, but they're not the same deck in this matchup, that's for sure. So an attack for 12 now and going to draw, is it, <laughs> oh my good, oh my goodness, Reed Duke, stop, yeah. stop, he's already dead. There's a Sublime Epiphany as well, just in case Andrea wanted to have any fun yeah. at all during this game, <laughs> Reed is here to say, no, 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 yeah, you don't get to have fun. Yeah, Riley, with this card drawn and this being the last matchup of Historic, this will be Reed Dukes and Andrea Mangucci's final parting for this uh, for this event for sure. Yeah. I'll see myself out. 
Sublime Epiphany in the hand here for Reed Duke's going to make sure that Andrea really isn't going to be able to get his uh, get himself in this game. But look, honestly, the biggest problem that Andrea has had, not drawing enough lands. Reed Duke wins two games to zero here. Andrea, unfortunately, the Winds of Fortune not at his back. And Reed Duke takes full advantage of the fact that Andrea just could not find